Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. You know, at the beginning of every month, I do a video that's called the top 10 most expensive and most profitable items that sold in my eBay store for the prior month. And while those videos are very fun and exciting to do, you know, everyone likes to see those items that sold for $100 or right around $100, sometimes several hundred dollars, or even there was one comic book I showed you earlier this year that sold for over $1,000. Those are exciting. I mean, especially if you could source those items for a low price and make a nice high return on your investment, it motivates people who are watching it to go out, try to find those items. There's a thrill of the hunt and that sort of thing. So while those videos are great, they don't accurately reflect all of the different types of items that are selling in my store over the course of that same month. So for a while now, I have been thinking of putting together a video for you called 10 items that sell for $10 in my eBay store that you could still make a nice profit on, uh, even if you're doing uh, free shipping. Now, the key to do this, even with a free shipping model, it's essential that you are sourcing the items low. What's low? It's got to be a dollar or less, and in many instances, preferably even just a few cents per item. How do you do that? I'm going to show you some examples as we go through the items in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to Courtney from the Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. Uh, Courtney was doing a video last night in which she talked on her live show about one of the videos on her channel that's called Bread and Butter uh, Bolos. And so that's a very similar concept to what I'm talking about here. These are more common garden variety items that are still worth picking up if you could source them for low and you know you could sell them towards that lower end of the price range so they're not going to be you know several hundred dollar items or thousand dollar items or things like that but there's still things worth picking up and looking for that you could get for cheap and sell well but i'm going to limit this video to ones that are literally $9.99, or I'm just going to call them $10 for the purpose of this video, again, with free shipping. But when I heard Courtney talk about that last night, it motivated me to actually put this video together that I've been thinking about for a while. But go check out Courtney's channel. It's a lot of fun. And check out that bread and butter bolo video that she did as well. But let's uh, jump into the first set of items. And the first one here is going to be postcards. And this was a year, if you remember, at the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to get into postcards. And uh, I bought a lot of collections. I mean, now I have thousands of postcards. And when I picked up the collections, if you remember from the haul videos, I wound up getting them at, at really at great prices that I was really just investing cents into each uh, postcards. So we're literally talking pennies into them. And so this would be an example of one that sold for $9.99 or 10 bucks. And, you know, one of the things that stands out about this is there's, you know, some tragic humor to it. In fact, it's called Desert Tragedy. As you can see here, there's a nice, uh, you know, standout visual image of the skeleton that's you know, reaching across the desert, trying to get to that canteen. And he or she just falls short. And as a result is, uh, you know, turned into a skeleton. So, you know, it's it's an interesting item. It's a cool item. And on the back of the card, there's some references to Tahoe on there, you know, and Reno. And a shout out to Don, the auction professor, who had gotten my attention when talking about postcards and the word Reno and uh, Lake Tahoe and, you know, and, and just some of the value that's associated with those cards. So I had hoped that this one would sell for higher than $9.99. And I did start it off for higher. So that's another point I want to make out here is that, you know, it's not that you have to start all these items at $9.99. So you could start it, for example, at $19.99. But if it's not selling, and for me, I wait a week at that price. And if it's not selling, I'll lower it a little bit. So you could lower, for example, by a dollar each week until you get down to that $9.99 range. You may or may not decide to put best offer on once it's higher than $9.99. But my suggestion to you is that once you get to $9.99, if you had best offer on prior to that, shut it off at this point because you're going to have to pay at least $2 and change to send out your item. And this would be pretty much the cheapest type of item that you're going to send out uh, first class. It's going to be about 
you know, two ounces pretty much once you've put it in the bag and protected it with the cardboard and put it in an envelope, you know, so $2 and some change. But remember, you paid cents for it. So, you know, even paying, you know, 10% to eBay or, you know, a little bit under 10 if you're a top rated seller and, you know, your 2.9% fee to PayPal plus the 30 cents, you're still making a nice profit on this item. So if you could do this in volume, that's the key. And as you could see here, I'm going to show you some other postcards that also sold for $10. Now this one, I actually decided to do a little experiment and I started it as a $9.99 auction and it sold in uh, seven days for that price. Now I was hoping that it would go for higher, but I told myself, you know what? I'm happy if it sells if it sells for at least nine dollars ninety nine cents with me only having a few cents into it you know that really helps this is an, a vintage postcard as you can see by the art it also has um uh, you know kind of an african americana uh, component to it that also appeals to uh collectors where everyone's you know handing out their or holding out their palms there uh this other card as you could see here also has a nice vintage decorative look to it with these uh nice little serrated edges on the side so just really cool um really neat postcards this is another one that's a more, I mean, it's not as vintage as the other ones, but it has a little bit of a humor to it with this mythical jackalope uh, creature. So if you've never heard of the uh, jackalope before, uh, here it is. And if you look up the jackalope, uh, it has a little cult following. So if you ever see anything uh, kind of like this, uh, you know, this mix of this rabbit and the, uh, with the uh, antelope uh, horns here, uh, there's uh, there's quite a lot of people who like these types of things. So there you go. Someone was willing to fork over $9.99 for the jackalope uh, postcard. Uh, here's another example here. Uh, this is for the movie The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Uh, great uh, commemorative postcard. Not of the movie. Many of you may be thinking of the movie with Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton, but there actually was a play that that movie was based on. And this is from the play. And the uh, artist here, uh, as you can see, there's the signature uh, right over there. Uh, that that artist is a famous shoe artist, actually. And so uh, they actually hired that uh, that artist to uh, make these um, uh, these postcard uh, this postcard art with the with the references on here to the shoes and you know they're kind of flirting with each other you know and there's a little sexual innuendo here as you could see as well so. Uh, it's a really cool card. I actually have a few more of these that are at my eBay store, the Primetime Treasure eBay store. So if you like this card and you want to pick one up, I have them on there right now for, for $9.99. I actually will just have one right there. But I have some more that I'm going to uh, list once each one sells. I put up one at a time. Uh, the links to uh, or the link to my eBay store is in my uh, description section and also at the top of my uh, YouTube channel. So just mention that because if you saw it and were interested, I do have... Uh, some more. Uh, this is another type of interesting uh, postcard here as well. We just had a cha-ching while I'm doing this show for you. So let's just see what's sold. It'd be funny if it was a $9.99 uh, item. And I actually think that it may have been. It actually was. I literally sold a $9.99 item while I am here. And I'm going to show you what that was when I get to that type of item because I actually have it later on in the video. So that's kind of funny. Hopefully you heard that uh, cha-ching go off. But this one here is another postcard. This is um, uh, anything anthropomorphic. I know Don, the auction professor, loves these types of postcards because they're anthropomorphic. If you're not familiar with uh, anthropomorphic and someone told me I was mispronouncing that earlier so but uh, that's how I like to say it is anthropomorphic uh, basically what that means it's it's when you're putting human like uh, qualities onto uh, animals and you're showing them do human uh, activities so here you go you know the dogs they're mowing the lawn and they're causing a ruckus and you know they're cleaning outside and they're raking the leaves and doing all those sorts of things and uh, this particular artist uh, Manzier uh, has done a lot of these uh, dog and also cat ones as well and they're nice and bright and colorful uh, many of them will sell for $9.99 easily and some of them will also sell for more again you don't have to start the price there you could start them higher, but again, once you get to that $9.99 range for all these items that I'm showing, my suggestion to you would be to stop it there. There's no point really even putting them lower than that because they're, chances are they're going to sell for the $9.99 range at some point. Someone's going to come along. Um, 
Another item, this would be our second class of item, would be shirts, t-shirts. So t-shirts, you could often source these at garage sales for 25 cents, sometimes 50 cents, or a dollar. Uh, and this was one, this Jack Daniels ones, and this is legitimate for those who uh, know of my uh, Jack Daniels Vero fiasco that I had in the past. If not, go back to my uh, video about me going into eBay jail over a Jack Daniels Vero violation. But this is a legitimate uh, item here. And uh, I bought this at an indoor garage sale and there were a whole bunch of these Jack Daniels shirts included uh, as well as a whole bunch of other alcohol related uh, t-shirts. And I, I actually, this is the last one of them that I sold. I sold every single one of them uh, for $9.99 uh, a piece and I wound up getting, and actually there were some I even sold for more at the very beginning when I was starting with some of these shirts. There were a few of them I even sold for $19.99, but uh, you know, eventually uh, there were some other ones in there that were nine ninety nine. So, and I wound up sourcing them like for each one of these. I wound up get I had less than a buck into each one of them. So these are going to go first class mail. You just put them in a poly mailer, and that's it. And they just go out. It costs a couple bucks to ship. And again, it's volume if you're buying a lot of shirts. You know, for a low price. Uh, here would be another uh, example. Uh, this one sold to someone in my Facebook group. I think it might have been Andrew Freeman from the Profit Monsters uh, YouTube channel. So go over and check out uh, check out Andrew's channel. It's a great uh, channel as well. Uh, this is a Buffalo Sabers youth jerseys, and it might look large, but it actually is a youth jersey. And you know, being a youth jersey, uh, there's not as much uh, fabric in it as there would be for an adult. So this one, you know, not very um, not very heavy at all. Uh, you know, stays on their, um, you know, in the first class range, which means for first class, when you combine it with whatever kind of shipping material you're using, you've got to keep it at 16 ounces or less. And that's if you're printing uh, your labels through the eBay store. That's where you're going to get that discount. If you bring it into the post office, it's not going to bring first class all the way up to 16 ounces. You know, if you, if you actually walk in to get the postage. So it's very important that you print out the first class postage. Uh, and I would say actually all of your uh, postage on Online to get those discounts. So number two would be uh, t-shirts or other kinds of shirts. This isn't uh, a t-shirt actually, this has uh, longer sleeves, but you know any kind of lightweight shirt that's going to stay 16 ounces or less uh, that you could source for low, that's a good type of item that you could sell for 10 bucks and still make a nice profit on when it's said and done. Uh, There's another type uh, which would be uh, pinup art. Now you could find large collections of pinup art at trade shows like the comic book show that I sh that I uh, showed you uh, earlier uh, this uh, past weekend. In fact, there was someone there who was selling a bunch of uh, pinup art. This is uh, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Uh, this is a print, so it's not original. It's by Joe Orsak, who's actually, uh, he was actually at the uh, convention uh, signing things. So because he's from the central uh, New York area, which is where I'm located. But you could you could find a bunch of these things often in bulk for a buck or less, and there you go. Uh, even if it's you know just a, a print, which is a reproduction, you've got a ten dollar sale right there. It's very light, easy to ship. Put it in some uh, you know protective plastic. You know, put a board behind it, sandwich it between uh, some cardboard, and off it goes. First class mail, nice, quick, profitable item right there pinup art, look for those types of things as well. Another one would be uh, plastic uh, cups. Okay, so the mugs, if you're going out for mugs, like ceramic mugs, glass cups and mugs, those are generally going to go for over um, 16 ounces. And once you put all the protective material so it doesn't break and stuff, you're, you're usually going to go over that. So those are going to go uh, priority for the most part. But this is different. This is uh, your traditional, you know, plastic souvenir mug. So look for these souvenir mugs. If you remember and you've been watching my channel for a while, you may remember me uh, picking this uh, out of essentially what became just garbage or uh it wasn't out of a dumpster or anything but it was uh th the end of uh, a community garage sale i told you you go around at the end of those and things that don't sell people just put at the end of the curb and this was something i just grabbed out um i checked the comps on it i said this should sell for you know somewhere between like maybe 10 and 15 dollars uh, i was thinking at the time uh and so wound up selling for 10 bucks and still went out first class um for something like this you could just uh wrap it in some large 
bubble wrap and you know you could put it in a poly mailer or you may even be able to get a nice little lightweight box that doesn't weigh much and still uh, wind up getting this to 16 ounces or less so there's a quick uh, ten dollar sale for something i literally got for free and yeah, I got it for free. So you might say, well, you got lucky, but what about me? I might not find that. Well, you can find these things often at garage sales, at flea markets, these plastic souvenir cups for a buck or less and still turn around and make a nice profit on them. So uh, that's that one. That I believe we are up to uh, number four. So number five would be comic book related items. And I'm going to show you different types. I could kind of... You know, I could have just kind of broken these up and make it each one of these separately, but I'm going to just try to add some value for you here and lump these different types of comic uh, items together. So while this might on the face of it look like it's a comic book, it's actually not. This is actually, well, it is and it isn't. It's not your traditional uh, comic book like this one here. You know, I have a Masters of the Universe one right here. It's the first issue. It's not that, but this is actually a, a small little digest book. I'll show it to you on the side so you could get a better uh, look at it here. You see that? That's actually a nice small little book, and it actually happens to be signed by the artist. This actually I got through a private uh, estate sale pick. It's the one I've talked to you about many times where I went back to the house four different occasions and just got truckloads and truckloads of collectibles. And so, you know, this little digest here, mini Marvels, or you could look it up. There's many times either signed or unsigned that it does sell for that nine 99 uh, price range. So uh, some signatures are more uh, valuable than others. So having a signature on it usually does help, but it doesn't always skyrocket the value. Don't, don't think that's a little side tip. Don't always think that a signature is always going to mean that now you have some item that's going to sell for hundreds of dollars or something. It's not, uh, always the case. So there are these little digest books that could sell for, for that range. Uh, another one here would be a trade paperback book. So this is a uh, you know collection of uh, you know other stories. This one is through Deadpool. It's Deadpool's Art of War. And if you look at it from the side, you could see here that it's a nice uh, it's a nice thin book. It's longer than the small digest book that I showed you earlier. So this is about the size of a regular size comic book. It's just basically thicker, you know, and contains uh, many stories uh, within it. So uh, there's that one there. There's a Deadpool one, and then. Of course, there's your regular size comic book. This is your traditional comic book that, you know, for people who don't mess around with them too much are more familiar with. This is uh, a nice old Woodsy Owl comic book. I love this one. There's a lot of them out there, though. And so, you know, supply and demand is going to affect what you're going to be able to do with these uh, comics. And believe it or not, there's many people who are selling comics for you know, five, six bucks online. So, you know, I just, this one was in pretty decent condition. So I put up for $9.99, just left it there, um, uh, free shipping. And eventually someone just uh, came in and, and bought it. So with the comic books, by the way, I have, as you know, for me buying out my large lots, I have generally about 15 cents or less invested into each one of these books. Now you've seen, if you've been watching my, uh, uh, my what sold videos that there's a lot of comic books that I sell for you know a great amount of money. I was just telling you about one at the b beginning of the video, uh, the giant size X Men number one. That's the one that sold for twelve hundred fifty dollars. So there's as you can see here a massive range in terms of what comic books will sell for, and it really has to do with uh, supply and demand that's going to determine that. Uh, so, uh, but there are many like this. There are these uh, smaller ones that you could. Uh, I get that aren't worth a lot of money like uh, like this one here the small little book and then there's the you know larger regular size comics that you know you could still wind up getting 10 bucks out of them so don't think you have to throw them out or anything like that you know put them up for 9.99 and you can make a little sale even with damaged ones that are older like these are some golden age ones uh, famous uh, uh, funnies and funny folks now you might think wow those must be worth a ton because they're really old and they say 10 cents on them but they're not they're just not that desirable there's not a lot of people who are looking for these um uh, because they're the, the more humor based ones are not the ones that a lot of people are just going after and especially if they have condition issues like this um 
you're going to have a hard time moving it. In fact, trying to sell either one of these individually for $9.99 would have been very difficult, believe it or not. So I combined them together to, to add value. And you're not adding much weight when you're doing this. You're just adding a tiny, tiny bit of weight. So sometimes I'll sell two, sometimes three comic books together uh, for that $9.99 uh, rate. And it just helps me uh, to move the product. Now, there are exceptions. There are some famous funnies uh, books that are in better condition, that are older, that are not issue number 185, that are more towards the beginning. And those, yes, they, those will sell for a lot of money. And if they're graded and if they're certified in a slab like this Doctor Who issue right here, this, uh, yeah, this one's really cool. I love this one uh, with Tom Baker on it. But, you know, there are ones like that that will sell for a lot more money, but then there's the other end of the spectrum. So you have to be aware of that whole, you know, basically that continuum of pricing uh, with a lot of different items uh, that you wind up picking up. So uh, that's the comic books. And in fact, the item that I wound up selling, I'll try to bring this up to the camera, see if you could see it. This is the one that I just uh, actually sold right here. Uh, that cha-ching you heard. This is a hardcover book, but it's a thin hardcover book. And this is uh, the New Teen Titans uh, book uh, right here. Uh, there you can see the $9.99 uh, price right on there. So it's a thin hardcover. So these other ones are obviously a soft cover uh, books that I've shown you, but you know you could sell some of those thin hardcover ones for $9.99 uh, as well. And those uh, are books that, again, I have very little little into, uh, less than a dollar uh, into those books because I buy them in, in big lots. And you know, just again, just to make this point is that when you're buying these big lots, I've talked about this in other videos, you, every when you buy a big lot, the thinking behind that is that you're going to pick up some of these lower priced items and the trade off for that is you're going to get some gems in there, some things that can make you your money back fast uh, and even maybe put you into profit very fast. But then you've got these regi residual items and you need to do something with them. And this is you know, a way you can move some of these items is with this $9.99 uh, pricing strategy that I like to do. Here's just, uh, I think, one other example. This is Top Guns of the West. This is a giant size uh, comic book. So these are usually 80 pages or 100 pages or so. Uh, you could see here, maybe, I don't know if I have a side view of it. No, I just took three pictures of it. But it's a thicker sized comic book. It's like about, you know, double the size of your regular average size comic book, maybe even sometimes three times the size, but still a $9.99 price range on this one uh, as well, the Super DC Giant. Okay, so that's number, that's our uh, fifth group. So now we're going to move into the sixth group of, oh, one more. I, how can I pass up? I put this in here for Carol, uh, the CEO of, uh, she wants to be the CEO of eBay. So Carol, if you're watching this, this one actually went out to her. You saw me actually source this at the father and son video, this Mad Magazine. I actually mentioned when I pick it up that I knew Carol liked it. Uh, Carol mo helps moderate my uh, my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and I knew she liked Bruce Springsteen. So when I saw this Alfred E. Newman uh, kind of imitating Bruce Springsteen as part of the E Street Band, and actually said that's a good display cover. Uh, I thought Carol would like it. Sure enough, she did, and uh, wound up selling it to her for $9.99. So I hope uh, Carol uh, uh, received it at this point and liked it, and maybe she'll make a little comment down below. But comic book magazines, that's why I also put this up, is to also make the point that the magazines, also some individual issues, will sell for $9.99 that you could pick up. And I got this, you remember, I picked this up for $0.42, cents, $9.99, quick flip, sold like the next day. But you also, in my What Sold videos, this is another thing that's important. So this one, $9.99 for the single issue. But then you also see, right, even in my most recent What Sold video, um, that one you saw that I had 50 Mad Magazines that sold for about $189, $190, $185, something like that. And I've shown uh, lots like that for Mad Magazines that have sold you know, in, in many other What Sold videos as well. So sometimes... You know, you can make your money on these items by putting them together into big bolt lots, but other times you could piece little ones of them out for these $10 and more sometimes uh, prices. So, okay, so that is the end of the fifth group. So let's move on to some, some other ones here. So number six would be hats and caps. So uh, I picked uh, this one up along with many others. There was a, a haul video did it in a state sale. I just got a whole big bunch of 
uh, caps. In fact, it's in the one called the Epic Estate Sale. If you want to go back, uh, just to reference it, if you want to type it in on my channel, you can go back and watch me source this. There was a room that just had all these hats in it. So I just scooped them all up. I put them in the box. And when you see what I paid for everything at the end, I mean, I could pretty much actually just tell you that I literally have like nothing into this, like a fraction of a penny practically. So to sell it for nine ninety nine, um, you know, was uh, you know, not a problem for me, you know, because I just I've done a video before showing you how to ship out hats. So if you didn't see that, type that in on my channel. Just you know, wrap it up in a in a plastic bag, you know, nice little uh, compact small box that it goes in. Put a little stuffing inside the hat just to keep it nice and firm and everything while it goes out. Uh, and that's going to cost you a couple bucks first class mail. You're going to be able to ship out pretty much all caps and hats as first class mail so uh, look for those uh, this was a jester hat that i sold in my ebay store picked this one up at a um uh, picked this one up at an estate sale as well uh, and this was just like a toss-in item it's hard to even tell you like an investment number for this because it's just so low the deals that i'm throwing these things in as just throw-ins with like big bulk purchases so it's like pennies invested into these into these items and so they're just you know quick ten dollar flips so look out for hats caps there's all different types it's just a couple of uh, examples obviously you could look for winter hats winter caps and again many of them you could sell for more than 9.99 but you know at a minimum you should be able to sell them for 10 bucks with free shipping uh, song books are another thing to look for so this is uh, one of the song of the south books that i got at an estate sale and these are very thin so we're talking just a few sheets of paper inside of these that's it and so a lot of times you're going to find these at estate sales which is where i found this one you're going to find them a lot of times at uh, um, flea markets in particular um, you'll see them at rummage sales once in a while you'll even see them at garage sales and they often come in big bins and stuff so there's a lot of people who go out there and they'll just buy up big lots of song books and, and sell them, uh, song sheets, uh, I should say. Uh, so it's a sheet music, essentially. So there are thicker books technically called song books that are more modern ones, so I guess I should uh, more accurately refer to it as sheet music, but you know, look for these uh, particularly good titles like this. If you could buy a, you know, a lot of them or even just buy some individually you know, for a buck or less, and if it's buying a big lot of them, you could get them usually for pennies, and then if you could flip them for 10 bucks a piece, that's another great deal for you okay so but if you're buying them like one at a time or something or just a couple you know you may be paying 50 cents something like that maybe up to a dollar for them uh let's see here another one uh this one would be so let's see that was number the hats were six this was seven so this is uh, eight right here these are just little um nylon bags that you'll see once in a while, little covers. I wound up getting this as part of the Harley Davidson uh, shirt haul collection that I got a long time ago. And this just happened to be one item that was just randomly thrown in there. I mean, I purchased all these shirts for a great price. I mean, there are just so many of them, if you remember that video. And uh, this just, again, just happened to be a random throw in. So I really didn't pay anything for it per se. It wasn't priced out individually. It was just kind of tossed in there. And uh, everyone loves Harley Davidson, right? So this one didn't uh, last too long. There you go. There's a little bag. And people could do whatever they want with it. There's a little nylon cover. And uh, I, this thing weighs like two ounces. So that's it. $10 sale. Boom. Just put it in a you know, a little poly bag mailer or you know, a little envelope and send it out and um, you're good to go. Uh, so that's an easy one right there. Just any kind of little, you know, thin covers, bags like this, easy $10 sales if they have something on it that, you know, would appeal to a collector. And it could be anything. You know, this one has Harley Davidson on it. It could be, you know, Doctor Who on it. It could be Masters of the Universe. It could be... You know, something Jesse shops might like. You could have butterflies and unicorns and rainbows on it. You know, I don't know. It could be, it could be anything. It could be Star Trek stuff for Esme. You know, I'm just shouting out some people who I know watch this. Or Mary McQueen. We could have Shih Tzus on there to look like Daisy. You know, it could be anything. So, you know, just um, just be on the lookout for those types of things because, uh, you know, they're light. All these things have in common, right? They're light, easy to ship. You could source them for low and you could flip them pretty fast usually. Uh, this here, you may be surprised that these don't go for more, but they're actually very common, but you will see them around. They're the Nintendo Zapper Guns. Now, uh, this is the type of thing that you'll usually 
uh, wind up picking up in some type of lot if you buy like a big bunch of uh, Nintendo games or video games. This will be something that's often tossed in there and you can get rid of it, ship it still first class uh, and it will... Um, it will still, uh, you know, you you could still protect it with bubble wrap, put some cardboard around it, and uh, you know, wrap it in a poly mailer, and you could still get it out for first class. That's what I did for for this item, and uh, you know, still wound up making a good profit on it. I got this at that same private estate sale pick I was talking about later, uh, or sorry, talking about uh, earlier. And uh, that was mostly comic books and stuff in that haul that I went back four separate times. But there also were some video game related related items. So I didn't really have. Um, anything beyond a few cents invested into this one as well but uh you could sometimes get something like this for a buck at like a flea market or something someone might just you know toss this over to you for not much you know especially if you do like a bundle deal or something with somebody so look for the nintendo uh zappers there's a ton of them out there and they're really not worth that much so if anyone tries to tell you they are they're really not uh, there's just tons of them out there so that's why you're gonna have to price it at around 10 bucks if you want to move it quick um and then lastly uh, Funko Pops, and this is for if you are buying big Funko Pop lots, and that's how I would suggest doing uh, Funko Pops if you want to work in that area. I've bought, and you've seen on my channel, you could just type in Funko Pops. I've purchased some pretty epic Funko Pop uh, collections in the past, and when you do that, again, you are going to get some leftover items that are just ones that are what we would call commons. You know, it's the same thing with comic books and baseball cards. There are common items that people just aren't going to invest, um, you know, or pay a lot of money uh, to you for. So while in those same collections, I have Funko Pops that sell for you know 50, 60, sometimes even close to a hundred dollars. Then there's going to be ones like this that are, you know, these uh, $10 items. And I've shown you, I've done, I even have a playlist on my YouTube channel all about Funko Pops. I show you how to pack them, uh, you know, how to put them together, how to properly protect them so they don't get damaged. And you could uh, wind up, you know, shipping a Funko Pop first class. It'll get up there to around 14, 15 ounces, you know, so it'll ship for like four bucks and change usually. Sometimes maybe it will go over five depending on where it's going in the country, but still, you know, these are the items. I save these until after I've made all my money back from the from the collection, so I don't, you know, feel bad selling it for ten bucks. But they're quick, easy to ship if you you, you price them at this uh, range. And obviously, you're only going to price the ones at this range that uh, you know the market is saturated with them, and uh, you just want to try to move the product. And so, uh, set it for nine ninety nine, and um, you know, turn that best offer off, and they will move. So. That's a summary of uh, what I have here for you in terms of the uh, 10 different uh, types of items. There's others, but uh, these are ones that just uh, you know popped to the top of my mind and uh, I thought you'd find interesting and hopefully motivating as well. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Uh, make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, as you can see over here, we are at 9,000 and 200 subscribers so i'm still not quite at the point that i've given up on the 10,000 for uh you know by the end of the year so if you are watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet it would take on extra importance for me right now because i would love to try to see if i could uh hit that 10,000 uh, subscriber number uh, by the end of the calendar year so thanks so much if you help uh, contribute to that I don't say this too often, but make sure you hit the bell icon on the top of the page because that will also notify you as, um, when I go live. Uh, so you can get alerts about my live shows that I do every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I just announced today that I am going to have a live show uh, coming up this Wednesday night. And we are going to talk about uh, collecting and reselling uh, sports cards. So that's going to be a lot of fun with uh, just. Uh, Johnson, it's going to be a great time. He's got a YouTube channel dedicated all to this. He's a real expert in the area. So come over, even if you have no interest in that area. I always say it's very important to branch out and to learn about different topics, even if it's not something that you're super interested in. You know, when you're out and about and you're sourcing, you never know 
when that knowledge could help out and help you find something that you otherwise might have passed up on and now you're making money on it. So uh, with that, uh, just come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link is down below. Check out my Instagram account. I put a good uh, little video up there today, uh, which will still be there. Uh, it's not in my stories. It's in the main part of my Instagram about uh, photographing and displaying uh, shoes and sneakers so that you could sell them faster. So uh, go check that one out as well. And uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. I'll see you back at the next video, everyone. Take care.